What's up, everybody? Y'all come on in. Got a good one for y'all today. What's up, Orieka? What's up, Alexis? What's up, Angelica? Yeah, I'm here for a real one. Share and we'll get started. Yeah, come on in. We're going to have a fun one today. Yes, we are. Just give me a second. What's up, David?
All right, we'll give him another minute, y'all, and we'll get started. We will get started. What's up, Karen? All right, how about we begin? How about we begin? Today, we're going to go over the green hats. Now, a lot of people ask me about these green hats. He says, in the green hat energy, you know, they want to know more about it. It was an interesting concept. They want to know where I got it from, right? Well, the green hat is first and foremost a thought process or a philosophy, as you would say. And check it out. Here we go. There's an article on it. Check this out, what they say about the green hats. The green hat is the creative hat. Moreover, it's the provocative hat. You see what I'm saying? Let me read that again. The green hat is the creative hat. Moreover, it is the pro provocative hat. The green color stands for plants growing new opportunities, nature. Wearing a green hat, we make a conscious effort to come up with new ideas. These are ideas that are non-obvious. The, the more obvious solutions that may be just as good can already be brought forward with the yellow hat. Uh, this is a six hat theory, right? We are bogged down. We keep going over the same old ideas. We need something new. Let's put on our green hats and see what we can come up with. It's probably the hardest hat to really wrap your head around. True, as star seeds, we are we are knee deep, waist deep, actually, in this green hat energy. Why is it the Why is it the hardest hat to wrap around your head? The Bono has invented quite a few tactics to provoke new ideas that may seem new, because it, it is actually a, a, a difficult task to generate new ideas, you know, and put uh, forth those ideas and put those ideas into action. And we, especially since how we've been taught not to think at all. You see what I'm saying? You know, you just you just waking up and you've already been taught not to think at all. Now you want us to generate new ideas from scratch. So, yeah, you got you to gotta work through that. This blog post can uh, not do justice to his techniques. He wrote an entire book about this called Lateral Thinking. We're going to get into more into lateral thinking later. The main benefits of the green hat. You generate more ideas. By wearing a green hat, we make a deliberate effort to actually look for new ways of doing things, which is what a lot of star seeds are doing now. We are deep, we, we, we waste deep in this green hat energy at this point. We are looking for new ways of doing things, new ideas, new concepts, new uh, paths, new, uh, new everything for the most part. A whole new way of overhauling uh, our lifestyles, uh, uh, helping Mother Earth, and various other things we are doing. You see what I'm saying? Even overhauling our own internal cells. It's just uh, pure newness. You know, pure newness. So, we signal to others in our brains that now it's the time to be creative. There's a correlation between the amount of time we spend looking for new ideas and the number of new ideas we can come up with. Provoke new ideas. This is why it's provocation. We have a low output pressure with the green hat. It's totally under the protection of the green hat to say things that are impractical, stupid, or provocative. They can serve as stepping, stone, as stepping stones to very practical solutions. So it's chaos. See what I'm saying? This chaos energy. You know, you may you may be impractical. It may sound stupid. It may sound crazy. But the crazy shit is usually what works down here. You see what I'm saying? You know, that's the feminine energy. You know, what we call crazy, what we call stupid, what we call impractical is the chaos energy. Helping you, helping to guide you into producing something new. What does the chaos theory say? It says, literally, uh, everything appears random and chaotic. 
But in actuality, in their chaos, they're uh, developing a pattern of similarity. What is this pattern of similarity? They they are saying there are new ideas. There's a new web of intelligence that's being produced from or born from within this chaos or this seemingly these seemingly random events. Then they take it a step further with the butterfly effect, saying that the smallest things, the smallest energies, can literally produce gigantic effects down the timeline or somewhere else on the planet. It could activate somebody else. Your ideas could activate somebody else to do something as well. So don't forget that. You know, so people receive your energy all the time, the domino effect. You know, you may come up with it, but then somebody else may see and improve upon it, and somebody else may come behind them and improve upon it, and so on and so on. The domino effect, you see what I'm saying? So now, let's continue here. So they can serve stepping stones, very practical solutions. How can you connect all nine dots with just four connected straight lines? The task is impossible, or so it or so it seems. Unless, of course, you consider that you can also go outside the box, go outside your current way or your current thought process or your status quo, your traditional thinking. You know, we always say the comfort zone is you know, the place where you love to be, but it's also a form of death because you're not doing that new either. You see what I'm saying? It's a double-edged sword. Sometimes it's okay to be in your comfort zone when you just need to relax, regenerate, and recover. But when it's time to do something new, like the green hat provokes you to do, that green energy, that green force provo provokes you to do, then you got to step out of that comfort zone outside that box. Hell, you may even have to throw the whole box away and get a new one. You see what I'm saying? And get a new one, you know, to work, to, 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 to build a new one from scratch. You see what I'm saying? Most of the times our brain, our brains trying to pattern match and throw out things that don't fit the pattern. When picking fruits at the supermarket, we're quite good at finding out the ones that are not good and dismiss them. Many thinkers like to be secure and believe in the same ways with unusual ideas. Creativity requires exploration, risk-taking, and provocation. Unless we specifically wear the green hat and run the experiment, we will never know where we land. So, the green hat energy encourages you, this philosophy, this green hat philosophy encourages you to do things you've never done before or that you even never thought you uh, would do. Say, for example... I never danced before, but my ass went to, to college and learned and took a Latin dancer class. And I broke those fucking mental uh, restraints and paradigms in my mind about what I thought dancing was. That green hat energy forced me to do something I've never done before. I never was a dancer. I was never that kind of person. So I tried dancing, and I, I, I awoke things inside of me that I didn't even know existed. That's how this works. You know, I tried new things, I gained new ideas, and I learned it. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you're talking about. Things that you would never think you would do, the the green hat said, no, nah, try it out. You know, give it a test run. Trial and error, you know. See, see what's going on. See, see if it'll work for you. If it don't work, throw it away. Try something else. But if it do work, and this is what the green hat offers you. If it do work, and it may just work, then this is where it gets good. Now you own to something. Now you got you some blues clues. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you got going on here. So, 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 yeah. So now, men thinkers like to be secure and behave in the same ways with unusual ideas. Creativity requires exploration, risk-taking, spontaneity, and provocation. Green hats and uh, green, uh, yeah. Unless we specifically wear the green hat and run the experiment, we will never know where we land. Remember, I'm wearing a green hat, so I'm allowed to say things like that. You see what I'm saying? Because you in a period, you in, a, you in your chaos mind, trying to figure it out. Well, actually, you ain't even trying to figure it out right now. You just trying to produce something from the womb of, of, of the of the dark mind. You see what I'm saying? The dark matter mind. You see what I'm saying? The dark consciousness, the dark soul. So, a lot of uh, uh, the uh, a way to get around going crazy with the green hat energy is humor and creativity. Great humor writers understand what makes a good joke. There's always a provocative, unexpected element in a good joke. 
Is there a hole in your shoe? No. Then how did you get your foot into it? Perfect example. Here, we break out of the pattern of thinking holes are, are, holes are unwanted. They are signs of worn out shoes. And finds a new pattern that considers the hole and finds a new pattern that considers the hole of the shoe that you actually put your foot in. You see what I'm saying? So now you you you, you switch from a negative connotation of uh you you, you you switch from a negative connotation of uh, a hole user represents wear and tear to oh I put my hole in something to actually use it. You see what I'm saying? To actually make it, to, to actually make the machine go or operate. How to use the green hat? Lateral thinking. The core concept of the green hat in De Bono's book is something he calls lateral thinking. We're gonna get into that. The idea is to provoke new new answers using intermediate steps that are not realizable. We want to show a new thought pattern that is outside of the existing thought patterns. Provocation. My favorite example of how provocation, provocation was used to generate useful solution in the following. We need new ideas on how to fight crime in our neighborhood. Let's put on our green hats and see what we can find. Under the protection of the green hat, I will provoke a new way of thinking. What if everyone was a police officer? Hmm. Hmm. See what I'm saying? Well, if everyone was trained in the martial arts, you know, was trained to protect themselves and police themselves. Hmm. Hmm. And if somebody tried to attack somebody else, that person also knew how to police themselves so they could defend themselves. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. we And you can see this energy perfectly in the uh, TV show Cobra Kai. Everybody know how to defend themselves. But it, it, it's a way better energy versus what you see in the beginning of the season where everybody was getting, or one group was getting pushed around, knocked down, and, and they fell out and, and getting knocked out, right? Well, when everybody learned how to defend themselves, now everybody know something, a little something, something to protect themselves. They could go to war with each other. So now it's an equal playing field now. You see what I'm saying? Versus just a straight out massacre when you don't know nothing on how to protect yourself. This green hat philosophy is powerful. We can see how this, let's see, we can see how this solution is unrealistic, but it can't prompt a new way of looking at things. With this provocation, De Bono says the responsible parties came up with the concept of the neighborhood watch from the idea of what if everybody was a police officer. Couldn't verify, I couldn't, he said, the person who wrote this, said, they couldn't verify this story personally, but it makes it for a good story or a good mythology, which is in place, which is actually in place in many neighborhoods around the U.S. today. So, what if paid prisoners a pension at the end of their sentence? What if we paid prisoners a pension at the end of their sentence? Maybe they could integrate into society better and would be likely would be less likely to fall back into criminality. Tell me what you see with their provocation. Then you got to generate alternatives. In decision making, the quality of the decision will depend on both the quality of the alternatives available and as well as the selection process. So one simple way to increase the likelihood of good decision making is to increase the number of alternatives, the number of options, alter alternate paths. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you got going on here. We can either increase the price, leave it the same, or decrease it. Now while generally anything we decide will fall into one of the three buckets, there are many variations we can do here. We could increase prices later. We could create new more expensive version and lower the prices of the existing option. We can offer coupons valid for one month to boost sales now. There are many more options still. The point is to get our minds out of the ingrained thought patterns and find new ways of looking and even doing things. Looking at things and doing things. You see what I'm saying? So, a good trick they use or a good technique is the, 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 the word po. Poor as they were invented by De Bono. The goal is to have a playful way to say unusual and provocative thing. Poe drugs, poe gardening. Give me your thinking on what you see there. Poe executives should determine their own salaries. Poe kids should should their own uh poor kids should uh, I guess um have their own classes or something. Is some of the words missing. Levels. Sometimes it's appropriate to break out of the current level of thinking. This is what a lot of us are doing right now. We are breaking out of this current status quo way of thinking. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so you, you're going to see a lot of that from now on, from this point on. You've been, you've been pushed by this new Aquarian energy, this new plasmic thought process that's in the air to, um, uh, you know, to develop this new thought process, break out of this status quo, this, this, this stagnant, 
uh, way of thinking that everybody has been on for the past 400 years. You see what I'm saying? You've asked me to come up with new solutions to have people commute to their offices. With the green hat, I think we should look at solutions that involve commuting at all. Well, if everyone could be done from their homes. Wearing the green hat, I think we should reconsider spending our advertising budget on PR instead. Shaping ideas into something useful. After we create new ideas with the use of the green hat, we still need to shape them into something useful. This is where we subject the idea to the real world constraints that's prevailing. You see what I'm saying? This is where we could use a sequence of other hats. For example, a yellow hat can find all the benefits of the idea. Then the black hat can uh, point out the risk. The yellow hat can be used again to show solutions to solve problems surfaced under the black hat. And they ran the mo- and they tend to move the black and yellow hats to help refine the idea to something we can implement. How will we make sure that neighbors don't start spying into each other's homes? We could have simple training done for all of the volunteers when they first f- sign up. There they could learn about how to behave so to minimize crime and make their neighbors feel safe and not spied upon. The summary of the green hat. The green hat allows us to have deliberate time and effort to be creative. It motivates us to come with ideas and break the current pattern of thought. And it has low pressure on output, but it simply asks us to make an effort. Can use lateral thinking techniques such as provocation where we say something silly to find something useful that is new. May make use of posts to signal thought-provoking statements. Want us to further shape our ideas with the other hats to make them usable. Now it's your turn. Training. When can you apply the green hat? Next. Whom can you ask to wear the green hat to switch them out of their black hat thinking? Get the lateral thinking book. Next time we'll dig into the blue hat. So there you go. There you go. So 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 it's a thought process. Yeah, you know, when I when I received this download about the green hats, this is what they were talking about, the philosophy of the green hat producing something new. This is what the Anunnaki and all the other star families want us doing right now. Create new ideas. Writing something new, doing something new. Something never that's never been seen before. So and that's gonna lead you to places you never even knew uh existed. So now Another aspect of the green hat is lateral thinking. So what is lateral thinking? You know, what, what, what is this energy? Lateral thinking is an unorthodox thought process that deals in solving uh, problems using an indirect, intuitive, and creative approach via reasoning that is not immediately obvious. You see what I'm saying? That is not immediately obvious. Obvious. So... So what I mean by that, it means that it involves ideas that may not be attainable using only traditional step-by-step logic. Consider pseudoscience, of course they made it pseudo, by some the term was first used in 1967 by Edward de Bono in the book The Use of Lateral Thinking. De Bono cites the judgment of Solomon as an example of lateral thinking where King Solomon resolves a, dis- uh, resolves a dispute over the parentage of a child by calling for the child to be cut in half and making his judgment according to reactions that this that uh, this order receives. Eric De Bono links lateral thinking with humor, arguing that arguing that they switch over from a familiar pattern to a new unexpected one. So there you go. So 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 there's a switch over through using humor and creative outlets to um, to produce uh, an unexpected pattern. A new unexpected pattern, to be precise. It is the moment of surprise, generating laughter and new insight, that aha moment that makes you laugh like, yes, I finally get it. See what I'm saying? Which, which facilitates the ability to see a different thought pattern, which initially was not obvious. According to De Bono, lateral thinking deliberately distances itself from the standard perception of creativity as vertical logic, the classic method for problem solving. So now, that's some, what's some of the methods of this? They say lateral thinking has to be distinguished from critical thinking. Critical thinking is primarily concerned with judging the true value of statements and seeking errors, whereas lateral thinking focuses more on the movement value of statements and ideas. What do you mean by that? A person uses literal thinking to move from one known idea to new ideas. So they, they, they take one known idea and then they start to go from there. They use it as a footstep to go to uh, and, and begin to think creative, creatively to go to many other places. What's up, DeAndre? So, yeah, a person uses lateral thinking. Yeah, yeah. Edward De Bono defines four types of thinking tools. Ideal generating tools intended to break current thinking patterns, routine patterns, 
uh, to break the status quo. Then you have focus tools intended to broaden with a search for new ideas. And then finally, you have uh, you have harvest tools intended to ensure more value is received from ideas generating output. And finally, treatment tools that promote consideration of real world constraints, resources, and support. So yeah, so 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 yeah. So random entry idea generation. The thinker chooses an object at random or a noun from a dictionary and associate it with the area they are thinking about. The bono exemplifies this through the randomly chosen word, nose being applied to an office for <coughs> photocopier, leading to the idea that the copier could reduce a lavender smell when it was low on paper. So yeah, and they go on and on, you know, challenge, concept formation, disproving, uh, uh, fractionation, and so on and so forth. You know, they go in and in, uh, uh, on this lateral thinking process, which is pretty much it's pretty much a uh, chaos thinking process. What's up, Link? What's up, Rain? So, so, so it's pretty much a, a, a creative thinking process that's designed to get you out of the status quo, get you out your comfort zone in your mind. But this is what the green hat. This is what the green hat philosophy has to offer. You see what I'm saying? Got a little one minute video where they kind of go in on it a little bit. Let me see here. Green Hat for creative thinking, idea generation, and fresh thinking. It is used to put forward possibilities and untried ideas without evaluating them. This evaluation is done with the other hats. The Green Hat can be used specifically with the outcomes of another hat, and it can be used when considering the overall subject. We increase the productivity of the green hat by using other creative thinking tools, such as yes, no, po, random input, or stepping stones. These tools can also be found in the creative thinking topic on Dendrite. So there you go. A little one minute snippet on a green hat. So now, let's continue here. So we know that green hat energy is also the way of nature and by extension the soul and the universe. See what I'm saying? Because nature, like I always tell y'all, is the first God. Those trees are not dead. They are alive and well. And they are coming to life more and more as we speak. The Yggdrasil, the, 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 the world tree consciousness. You see what I'm saying? That's what Yggdrasil is, your, the world tree consciousness. So, so, so you're going to see them start to rise up more and more. Motherfuckers going to be tripped out. When the trees in their yards get up, that's why you're trying to cut them down as much as possible right now. Because they know that these trees got to come up out this ground soon. Niggas going to wake up one day and, and, and come up out their tree. <laughs> come up out their tree. It's going to blow their fucking mind. See what I'm saying? So now. Now. Let's see here. Now, who are uh, the beings mostly aligned with the green hat energy or the green hat philosophy? It is like us, the star seeds. Whereas everybody else trying to in, uh, um, recreate systems that was already here. The red hatted Moors trying to recreate they uh, Moors magistrate. You know, they Moors magistrate they did in Spanish Europe and over here for a while. During the, uh, between the 1700s and the 1600s. The the black hats trying to create their corporations, you know, destroy the planet as best they can, use their all kind of magic to fuck shit up. You know, that they've been doing that since uh from eight uh eighteen seventy one up until present day. And then you got the white hats, the Christian Gnostics, old time America, the trying to re reinstitute the, the Christian Gnostic values back into the world. Um, you know, you seen them between the 1607 and 1871 with the Republic of America. You see what I'm saying? The original one, anyway. 
So yeah, so they've already had their systems, you know. They've already had their systems. So those are the red hats, the black hats, and the white hats. So it's funny they have a literal uh, uh, six hat theory here, you know. And I told y'all this is a four way war. So, but today we focusing on us, and I may come back with the red hat since everybody already talking about the white hats and black hats. I may come back with the red hat and more is what the fuck they've been doing later on. So yeah, so yeah. Let's see. In popular media, media, we would be known as uh, the Green Lanterns, masters of harnessing and manipulating the uh, manipulating hue, the force of creative will. Now, what are we talking about there? You see what I'm saying? I'm saying, what are we talking about when we say hue, the force of creative will? Well, now, uh, hue, this green light, this green ray, is very powerful energy. For us, because it is reflecting the heart force. We're gonna get in there too. And the creative will is your ability to animate anything with your mind and your will and produce it and generate it from nothing. We're gonna show you this example real quick. So check this out. Show y'all this real quick. From the movie Greenland, I showed this before, but it's very vital that y'all see it in this lecture right now. To master the ring, you must learn to focus your will and create what you see in your mind. The ring's limits are only what you can imagine. What did he say? You must, to master the ring, this ring, the lantern ring, oh yeah, we got it, we got one. To master the ring, he said you must learn to focus your will to create what you see in your mind, which is your imagination, right? We already talked about what imagination is. Imagination is so-called the, the nation of images, right? What do they mean by nation of images? It is the Stargate portal to all of these realms through the use of imagery. You see what I'm saying? Imagery. Imagery is the scenery. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's literally the scenes, the motion pictures that, that are produced in your mind. You see what I'm saying? Even emotion pictures because once you fuel those images with emotion, then those images come to life. And you actually live and experience those realms as if you was in them, which you technically are in them, you know, so they are real in that sense. And you can actually experience them. And whatever you do, what's more, whatever you do in those realms actually affects this realm too. Because you, your, your being is incarnated here. So whatever you do in those realms, you actually bring something back to this realm. So whatever you do in those realms automatically echoes send echoes of whatever you did in those other realms into this realm, altering it in some shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, so that's how this that's how the imagination works. So that's what he meant by you must learn to harness your will to uh manifest what you produce in your mind, your imagination. So let's continue here. One more time. One more time. Let's see here. And what you can imagine is what? Limitless. You know, limitless. It's a limitless mindset. So your imagination is limitless. So if you understand that your, your imagination is uh, limitless, understand it, you good. Oh, 
Lessons on wheel, powerful lessons on wheel. When you when you freeze up, when you let feel take control of your heart chakra, then your whole being shut down. But if you learn to harness the feel, regulate it in your heart chakra, spinning it around, you transmute it into spiritual power, emotional force, and you can even use that energy to affect the physical world. So well, who are these lanterns? You know, who are these lanterns? Y'all know in the Bible they talk about the seven lampstands, you know, the seven chakras. You see what I'm saying? So let, let, let's see, let's get into the signs of the lantern corpse as a whole. You know, we, we just went over the green lantern. The the what, what they what they teaching. So let, let, let's talk about the lantern corpse and the emotional spectrum. Let's get it. In the beginning, the universe 
Mars was in a state of supreme balancement, in absolute darkness. This state of absolute darkness represented order. At an unspecified point in time, the white light was introduced by an unknown entity, and for 700 years, the universe was nothing but a blinding white light. This state of total light represented chaos. The darkness, however, fought back against the light, eventually dividing the white light like a prism, into the seven colors of the visible light spectrum that exists today. These seven colors each represent a single emotion, and collectively are called the emotional spectrum, and correspond with the seven chakras found in Far Eastern traditions on planet Earth. According to a prophecy in the Book of Oa, the seven colors of the emotional spectrum would be harnessed by seven different lantern core, which would go to war with each other in a conflict called the War of Light, and fulfilling the Blackest Night prophecy. The seven lantern core would possess rings based on the emotional color they represented. These rings gave the wearer special powers like the Ring of King Solomon. The lantern core rings would give them the ability to create solid light constructs. The ancient Egyptian obelisk on planet Earth is a symbol of a solid beam of light from the sun god Ra. The immortal guardians of the universe first learned to unlock the power of the emotional spectrum, and they created the first lantern core using the green light at the center of the spectrum. The green lanterns harnessed the green energy of willpower, and were tasked with maintaining order throughout the universe as an intergalactic police force. The oath of the green lanterns is, in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight, let those who worship evil's might, beware my power, green lantern's light. The yellow lanterns harness the emotional energy of fear. Only beings capable of instilling great fear and others are capable of wielding this power. The oath of the yellow lanterns is, in blackest day, in brightest night, beware your fears made into light, let those who try to stop what's right, burn like his power, sinistro's might. The orange lantern represents the emotional energy of avarice. Only one single greedy being wields the orange lantern ring. The orange lantern oath is, what's mine is mine, and mine and mine, and mine and mine, and mine, not yours. Red is one of the energies far from the center of the spectrum, and represents the emotion of anger and rage. A person who has felt great rage is able to tap into the red light. The red light has a profound effect on the mind of those who harness it, rendering them to nothing more or less than a rabid animal. The oath of the red lanterns is, with blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate, we'll burn you all, that is your fate. Violet is the other color furthest from the center, and represents the emotion of love. As they say, there's a thin line between love and hate. Those who are capable of great love are capable of wielding the violet light. The violet lanterns believe the best way to spread love throughout the universe is to destroy hate and fear. One adverse effect of the violet light is that it can make a person mad with love, or crazy in love. The oath of the violet lanterns is, for hearts long lost and full of fright, for those alone in blackest night, accept our ring and join our fight. Love conquers all, with violet light. The indigo lanterns represent the emotional energy of compassion. The indigo light can be wielded by one with great compassion for other beings. The users of this light are capable of absorbing and utilizing the lights of other core as they would their own. The oath of the indigo lanterns is, in sorrowful day, and misfortunate night, we help those who need our might, with the lantern power of Abensor, we rid your misery, with compassion's might. The blue lanterns harness the emotional energy of hope. The blue light is capable of being wielded by a being who can bring hope for the future to others. The blue light is the most powerful of the spectrum, but despite being the most powerful color, it may only function to its fullest effect in the proximity of the green light. This means that hope requires willpower to make it reality. The oath of the blue lanterns is, in fearful day, in raging night, with strong hearts full, our souls ignite, when all seems lost, in the war of light, look to the stars, for hope burns bright. White is the combination of all the emotional colors of the spectrum. The white light represents life. Those who wield the white light have the capability to give life to the dead, and can create long-lasting solid light constructs. The oath of the white lanterns is, in brightest day, in brightest night, colors unite, and shine as white, we will illuminate your sight, when life ignites, let there be light. And finally, black is the absence of color, the absence of emotion, and hence emotionless. The black lanterns represent death. All beings that
that have died are capable of becoming black lanterns, and thus, it is the destiny of all beings in the universe to one day die and become black lanterns. Just like dark energy and dark matter make up 96% of the universe, and light only makes up less than 1% of the universe, likewise, the black lanterns are also the greatest in number. The oath of the black lanterns is, the blackest night falls from the skies, the darkness grows, as all light dies, we crave your hearts and your demise, by my black hand, the dead shall rise. So there you go. So there you go. Now you understand the whole emotional spectrum, and you see a lot of the energies, rage, the red energy, the red hat, rage, you know, uh, hatred, separatism. You see a lot of that with the more energy, the white hats. They think what they're doing is pure, you know, pure. They're about the 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 the, the uh, life. Uh, you know, because Jesus gave his life, you know, Jesus is their energy, their, their, their savior. Uh, you know, that that's the white hat energy, then you got the black hat energy, black represents what? Death. You know, in all the shape, forms, and fashions. You know, everybody said, he said everybody's destined to be, uh, returned back to the darkness, which is melanin. You see what I'm saying? Everybody's going to return back into their melanin, you know, of themselves, their dark matter within them, you know. So that's what you got going on here. That's what they mean. But you know, the way they're using the energy down here, death it just means destruction, sowing seeds of pain, misery, betrayal, going around, murdering, pillaging, plundering, raping, you know, the uh the list goes on, deceiving, you know, so 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 that's what they do in the cabal. You know, that's their thing. Um, you know, they about them they about their their the the high wizardry of their arconic master, Yavabo of the Demiurge, right? So 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 that's what you got going on. So 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 they talk about these rings. What does the ring represent? The ring manifests uh the the ring is a talisman that allows you to manifest your will more easily. You know, so everybody has their own, you know, energy in the movie. Everybody has their own ring. And they charge it on what? They charge it on this lamp. Let me show you the lamp. So you can see it for yourself. Picture of it, then get down a little bit. I just look it up then. Just go look it up. The lamp is real important. The the lamp is real, real important because that's what they use to charge. What does the lamp represent? The heart chakra, the heart soul. You see what I'm saying? That's what that's what it represents in these movies. It represents the heart chakra, the heart soul, the heart energy. Like literally, they had a they had an intergalactic world lamp on oil. We gonna get into oil in just a second. So yeah. There you go. Good holding the lamp. You know, they talk about these things, the seven lamp stand. So the the, the the lamp is 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 uh is the heart chakra. Now he said the green light was produced before all the other rays, right? You see what I'm saying? He said they say they oath is in brightest day and blackest night. No evil, no evil shall escape my sight. But the most important part is the second half. Let those whose evil worship evil's might beware my power, green lantern's light, that emanates from their heart soul. 
You see, what I'm saying? that energy comes out of them. So, so, so that's what that's what these energies are about. That's what these energy are about. So, what is will? Will is your ability to perform, act, or even take action in the form of generating, operating, and destroying. Manifestation is will, and manifesting is will. So, you can generate with your ring, operate with your ring, and destroy with your ring, which is the guide principle, the guide function, right? Well, there are different types of will. You have personal will, or the will of the individual, and you have divine will, which is the will of the source, the pre-existing one. So, your own personal will is the individual spark down here, the individual intelligence down here, divine intelligence, and then you have the divine will, which is the intelligence of the source, the pre-existing one, poor Mandra is, Nada, you see what I'm saying, the Nada, so this is what you got going on here, so uh, this is what's happening, so what is Hugh, it is the green force of creative will, they show a powerful scene in the movie with this, this green light, and let me go and show that real quick.
light when they do that. When they shoot the when, the, when they shoot the green light, radiation into the air. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see that is what green. That is what hue the force of creative will actually is. Is notice I said creative will. You know that's the third will that we haven't talked about yet. Creative will. We, and what the green hat has been talking about, the green hat here. Uh, the green hat, the force of creative will, is your ability to produce and generate new things on the go. You see what I'm saying? Creative will. See, the creative mind is your ability to generate new ideas. The creative will is your ability to perform the actions of those creative ideas. You see what I'm saying? It, it, whether at home or on the go. So, so, so this is what you got going on. So this is what this green light energy is all about. So let, let, let's continue here. Let's continue here. Uh, what is the, what, why the color green? Green being the fourth ray of light represents harmony through conflict. You see what I'm saying? It is the fourth ray of light. So it represents harmony through conflict. So that's what you got going on here. Next, let's see what is the agenda of the rainbow green hats, as we said. Because we still we still work with all our chakras. That's why it's rainbow. We star seeds are working to create a futuristic soul society or oil in the Green Lantern series, just like the planet or they was in a futuristic society. Or just simply means omega in and alpha beginning, meaning from the ashes of the of one age or the old age, a new age is birthed. It. You see what I'm saying? Now let me show you some images of ore. This futuristic society. Steel images in a way. Let's see here. Here go the planet ore. Full of green light radiation. See what I'm saying? You go a picture. Let me, let me turn that brightness down for a second. So y'all can see this. You go to plant it again. Just in case it was too bright the first time. You go to city. Futuristic society that you're building right now. You're setting the foundations for it as we speak. The Green Light Society or the Green Lanterns. Oh, this is all you. This is your story here. Green Lantern, Black Panther, hell, even Aquaman. That's all yours. Yeah, that's all. That's all us there. That's our story. So you can go check out those three movies. I'm trying to think of any more off the top of my head. Well, we are in power already. Wakanda, uh, or. And then you had Atlantis in the Aquaman series. We we in power in those movies. We you know we already in our advanced futuristic society in those movies. So you know, I'm trying to think of any more off the top of my head, but I know those are the big three. You know that I know y'all can go see and watch. Feel me? So yeah. So let's see here. Here go. Here go. Here go. More of the society. Concept art. So yeah, there you go, there you go. So that's the futuristic society. You are trying to create. Did I show you how that one? There we go. So that's or you know, your futuristic planetary society you see what I'm saying the green lantern insignia you got heart chakra that's what the green lamp is uh, let's see here of course we gotta show some people people from the green lantern society they go one of the ladies green lantern women Idris Elba dressed up as green lantern which I thought was dope Green Lantern homies, God damn. The Green Lantern homies getting together. 
to do what they what they just showed y'all they just did. Which is, I know it's a great feeling to do together. And then the Green Lantern ladies getting together to do their thing. Car chalker, baby. Car chalker. So, yeah. So, there you go. That's the futuristic soul society that we're talking about. So, 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 what is a soul society? It is a futuristic advanced civilization that is led by enlightened individuals who are deeply connected with their divine spark souls. And then I just showed y'all the pictures of the Owen Society. You know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. We already talked about what the, what the lamp can do. Is the, what does the lamp represent? It's the heart soul. Green's color of the heart chakra. Those earthlings are the children of Mother Earth or the Mother Heart. And so a new a new earth means a new heart. You see what I'm saying? A new earth means a new heart. So how do we usher in this new golden age? We do it by keeping our vibrations high and by doing whatever our souls and spirits guide us to do to usher in this new earth or this new heart. You see what I'm saying? We have already manifested green light radiation, which is in all the lakes and rivers and even oceans now. There is more to come. So what y'all seen, in, uh, like what y'all just seen, the planet, see, before it's over, the planet going to look just like this. This scene here. <laughs> with all that green light radiation bursting out of the planet before it's fucking over with. You know, when everybody vibrating high. Uh, in, in, in deep in their heart chakras from where from where this is going. It's gonna look just like oil. Oil is futuristic earth. Y'all just need me to say it out loud or the futuristic heart. So yeah. So you said that there was a corpse, a police force, which is pretty much uh the D C universe's version of the Guardians of the Galaxy, basically. So yeah, but they, they way more organized and, and, and on a way more godlike level. So yeah. This is what you got going on here. So this is what this green, uh, this is what this green hat energy is about. So this is what you're seeing. This is what you're seeing. We're we're heading towards this, you know. And we have also manifested the golden plasma to help usher in this new paradigm. This golden plasma, gold light, soul light. I always tell y'all they got blue plasma shields coming out. The blue, like he said, blue is hope. Blue is expression. Blue is truth. And so 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 all these energies are working side by side. But blue cannot do nothing without what. The green light. You see what I'm saying? You cannot express nothing without a balanced heart uh, to do it with. So this was this was happening here. This is what's happening here. So it, this is this big business, you know, for us right now. It, it's big business because uh, it's home. Feel the advantage for the Murphs, the Muyans, the Children of the Heart, the Star Seeds. All that's one thing. Order of Star Seeds, the Order of the Murphs, the Order of the the, the Mu Empire. The Muyan Empire, you know, the Muyans, we that's us. So that's all one energy. The star seeds, just letting us know that we come from the stars as well, connecting us to the stars. Uh, they, they, have, they are slowly but surely transforming into star lords. You see what I'm saying? And we're going to become the Muyan star lords before it's over with. You see? So that's what you got going on here. So, now, this is where it gets good. Uh, this is where it gets good. The resurrection of the dead prophecy. Oh yes, oh yes. So what if I told y'all that beings are, 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 are they killing beings, but they not staying dead. So let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on here. Check out my boy Ryan Gate real quick as he goes in. Oh, they kicked me out. Uh, he kicked me out of his uh his live all of a sudden. Now he ain't did that all day. But all of a sudden they kicked me out of it. I find it completely funny. Well, let's get it. What happened here? What's going on? some dots for you guys, right? And the dots we're going to connect them, we have to do with basically... The zombie apocalypse is World War Z thing, right, family? Because, like, we always say, 
whatever the wicked are going to do, like we know, whatever the wicked are going to do because of their lesser magic, they have to tell us they're going to do it first. And the way they do this is through movies, comics, you know, all kind of media, right, family? Remember, the fallen are the controllers of the airway. Remember that. The prince and the principality is the air. They control all the airwaves, all the media, all that shit, okay? So, family, um, when we're talking about this zombie thing now, right? I'm not talking about dead people coming back to life or any weird thing, not, not like the George Romero zombies. I'm talking about act, the actual reanimation of flesh. You see what I'm saying? Like, so, for instance, you have, like, a chemical that they might be able to use where a person can be brain dead, but the body be still alive. You understand what I'm saying? So, what I'm looking at now is all these people who they were saying were all bath salts and this and that, but they really weren't because, like, the Miami zombie, for example, he had nothing in his system, right? And he ate this guy's face, you know what I mean? They had to shoot him a hundred times before he would die. And this was, like, happening all over the country and all over the world at a certain point in time a few years ago. And it never stopped, really. They just stopped reporting it as much, right? Because we've become desensitized to it. But family, the thing I'm saying is, like... What the fuck is in the air and in the water? Because it's happening with the fish. Like, any of my people out there that are fishermen and you know about animals and meat, you know that once you catch a fish, you gut it, you skin it, scale it, 20 minutes, an hour goes by, you've already seasoned it, put it down, it's freezing and frozen, frozen, whatever. You know what I mean? You have it ready to cook, you put it in the frying pan, you just fry it. Nothing's supposed to happen. There's no life left in that. Well, family, it's not like that anymore. The fish meat, all the meat, the beef, everything, even after it's been cut up, seasoned, put down in the fridge, then it's taken out to cook it now, it's all of a sudden coming back to life. It's in the fucking oven coming back to life. It's in the frying pan coming back to life. I mean, some really extraordinary type shit. And if it wasn't, no one would videotape it. No one would care. It wouldn't become viral if it was normal. So shut the fuck up with that dumb shit. First of all, all right? Let's just use our common sense. If it was something normal, no one would videotape it. No one would care, okay? It's not normal. So what the fuck is going on with the air and in the water and in the food and shit that's causing flesh to reanimate? Is it that GMO? Are they genetically modifying these organisms and causing, like, all kind of weird mutations? What's going on? We don't know, family, like I'm saying. We're just trying to connect the dots and put the pieces of the puzzle together because we can't sit here like we're idiots with a thumbs up our asses, right? So anyway, family, I put together a couple clips for you. And I just want you to watch the clips. And like I said, we're going to discuss this in, uh, in the council meeting, right? In the next council meeting, which will be in a little bit. You feel me, family? But check this shit out, though. It's like really wild, fam, the shit that's going on. But check out this footage I got for you, fam. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you guys, you stay up and stay bliss and keep connecting these dots because we're going to survive. So it's got out. Bang, bang. No internal organs. Dead. Been good. And they got back in the war and yeah, it's The footage you're looking at here to me is amazing and impossible. I do not know how this is happening. If you know how this is happening, you tell me because there is no realistic explanation for this. There is something going on differently. It's a massive family and we need to figure this shit out because, yeah, they're trying to use this against us, obviously. Stay up. Bang, bang. <laughs> see that maybe too bright let me go back to that part there that shit crazy it's amazing and impossible i do not know how this is happening if you know how this is happening you tell me because there is no realistic explanation for this there is something going on differently with some asset family and we need to figure this shit out because yeah they're trying
trying to use this against us, obviously. Stay up. Bang bang. That motherfucker jumped off the plate on their ass. talk about this y'all in a way he right they is using nanotechnology to do some crazy shit like bring people back to life but and and then ice and shit you know keeping keeping animals alive and shit but i don't like to give it give them all the props what's really happening is you're seeing a prophecy of the resurrection of the dead also the plasma is bringing them back to life you see what I'm saying? The plasma is bringing them back to life. Literally, the plasma energy is performing a cosmic reanimation juice. Now, what, what the fuck is a reanimation juice? My Naruto fans, y'all already know. But for people who haven't watched Naruto, we got to talk about the reanimation juice. In 
entire Naruto universe. Reanimating the flesh. Notice what he said. Not bringing dead corpses back to life, but reanimation of actual flesh. Check this out. They put this in the anime, y'all. So today I'm going to be looking at what is, without a doubt, the most complicated ninjutsu in the entire Naruto universe. Kuchiyosei Edo Tensei, or Summoning Impure World Reincarnation, is an S-class forbidden technique created by Tobirama Senju and is a derivative of the summoning technique. The idea behind the jutsu is very simple. Its purpose is essentially to bring a dead person back to life. In execution, though, it's a lot more complicated than that. As the name implies, and as I mentioned earlier, this technique is derived from the summoning jutsu, which means that the person being brought back to life has to be summoned to the world of the living. Now, I'll probably talk more about the details of the summoning technique in another video, but one of the key traits of the summoning technique that makes using it to bring someone back from the dead so complicated is the fact that generally, when a person or animal is summoned, they have to have a contract with their summoner. Obviously, you can't exactly discuss making one of these contracts with somebody who isn't alive, but luckily, there's a workaround for that. In place of a summoning contract, a user of this technique needs a sample of the DNA of the person they wish to summon. The amount of DNA needed to revive a person isn't substantial at all and can be anything as small as a sample of that person's blood. The biggest issue a user of the technique will often run into is that a living sacrifice must be made in order to use it. Without a body to roam around in, the summoned soul can't really do much, so as Kabuto said, a living sacrifice is needed so that their body can be used as a vessel for the dead person being summoned. So once a person has gathered everything they need for the impure world reincarnation, the technique's ritual can begin. The ritual is very similar to rituals seen in standard summoning techniques as it involves a scroll and the smearing of blood or DNA of some sort on that scroll. Once the summoner activates this scroll, the remains of the person used to summon them spread out in the form of a seal around the person being sacrificed, and this is where the magic happens. A bunch of dust and ash will cling to the sacrifice's body, at which point they are effectively turned into the person being summoned. Their personality, chakra, appearance, and anything else of the sort are all replaced by the revived persons, at which point the ritual Let's is stop there. Basically, what he said is he used the atoms of the earth, the chemicals of the earth, to rebuild the physical body, <laughs> to regenerate. So, regenerate the organs. So, what y'all gonna start seeing here with these animals and these dead people whose bodies are still alive? That's why he wants you to cremate a lot more than that. Is if the body's still intact, they organs can regenerate. And they can walk back around. They can walk amongst us again. They live around this bitch. See what I'm saying? It ain't the zombies that y'all see in like Resident Evil. It's, it's more along the lines of beings who have so-called been killed, but their flesh regenerates and reanimates itself. You see what I'm saying? That dead, so-called dead flesh comes back to life. See what I'm saying? So that's what you got going on here. I'm trying to think, besides Naruto, what other movies have that happen in? Uh, motherfuckers thought they was dead. The the Immortals, it was, it was a movie that came out where they shot a motherfucker, killed and thought he was dead and they got right back up and the, and the bullet wounds healed. You know, they they, they, they come out with a, quite a few movies like that. Uh, Wolverine. Wolver, oh, Wolverine, probably the best one. You know, he, he, nigga shot him dead in the head in the movie. <laughs> nigga, 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 brain regenerated, y'all. His brain regenerated itself. He just had lost his memory. And he came back to life, you know, reanimation, you know, resurrection and reanimation, resurrection of the dead, reanimation of the dead. This is what you're seeing here. From this point forward, the summoner has complete control over the person they revived. Now, initially, when Tobirama first created the technique, reanimated shinobi ended up being much weaker than they were when they were alive. Additionally, there was a cap on how many ninja Tobirama could control at any given time, and both of these flaws together significantly limited the potential of the technique. When Orochimaru mastered the technique, he did his best to make the flaws less significant, but it wasn't until Kabuto mastered the Edo Tensei that both flaws were eliminated completely. There's no limit to how many reanimated people Kabuto can control at any given time time, and Kabuto's reanimated shinobi are much more powerful than Tobirama's were. Granted, Kabuto's reanimations are still slightly weaker than their living counterparts, but the issue is nowhere near as bad as it used to be. One drawback that no user of the technique has been able to get rid of is the fact that to reanimate a person, their soul has to be resting inside of the pure land, which is essentially the Naruto afterlife. Now, generally, everybody's soul goes there after they die, but there are some rare exceptions where this isn't the case. For example, Kabuto was not able to summon the first four Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village because each of their souls had been trapped inside of the belly of
of the Grim Reaper. Now, that said, the technique's flaws are offset by its many, many, many advantages. A user of the technique has control over every reanimated person they summon. The degree of control a summoner has over their reanimated shinobi is completely up to them as well. A reanimation's free will and personality can both be left intact, effectively allowing them to do whatever they want with no restrictions. Both the free will and personality of the reanimation can be completely eradicated, giving the summoner complete control over all of their actions. They can leave a person's personality intact, but take away their free will, effectively putting them in a state where they are programmed to do as the summoner wishes, but still have the same thoughts and feelings as they did while they were alive, and so on and so forth. Furthermore, reanimated shinobi will have access to every single ability they had when they were alive, even if those abilities are not originally theirs. For example, Nagato was revived with his running on. Let me stop there. So what they saying is, whatever skill you had when you you obtained, this, this is why the age of information was so important. The age of information was important for you to gain as much knowledge, skills, and abilities as possible. Because if you die and you come back to this motherfucker, you reanimate, you're going to have those same skill sets. You see what I'm saying? Very, very important. Very, very important point. You're going to have the same abilities you had when you was here. So this is what you got going on here. This, this, this shit getting real around here, ain't it? That plasma ain't no fucking joke. Bringing niggas back to life around this bitch. Bringing the fish back to life. Yeah, you got you got them fucking with t the technology too. The black goo, which is the black, which is melanin. Then the physical melanin on the physical. Cosmic melanin. That's what black goo is, to be precise. Uh, you, you got that too. You got that too. Uh, what's going on here is... Uh... They're using the melanin and the plasma to, to, to bring people to life and they install nanotechnology in the black goo, the melanin, to bring, uh, to control people's brains with uh, receivers, technologies, and making them go crazy. You know, let alone the vaccines, which is nothing but pure nanotechnology. They got upgraded nanites now. The list goes on with the, the fuck were they doing, but that's just them, you know. Where are they getting these ideas from? They're getting ideas from the supernatural events that's happening on the planet. The, they coming back to life naturally, like Simeon and Toko told them. He was able to do the same things in Africa during his timeline, where he was actually, they cut him up and he just regenerated. He just came back to life. And many other uh, gurus and black messiahs and messiahs in general that, that manifested on the planet, Buddha and everybody, told everybody what, uh, told everyone what they gonna do, what, 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 what people was gonna be capable of in the future. Y'all, and they, and they pretty much said it. Uh, even, even, even they Jesus said it. Y'all think we bad. Oh, them motherfuckers that's coming after us gonna be the fucking truth. <laughs> Watch, see what I tell you. See what I'm saying? Even Sim and Simeon Toko told them, like, hey, we coming back, you know, you may have chopped me up or whatever, but I'll be back. I'll be back. I just relinquish uh, my my soul and spirit from the mortal coil, but I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't, don't worry. Uh, we, we coming back to see you. So, yeah, see, we, 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 we now know how cruel you really are. That, that was what it was about. All the shit that they could think of, uh, that you could think of to do with an immortal man, and the only thing you could think to do is kill him over and over again. The, the 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 savagery, that that that's the best you can come up with is murder. You got an immortal god walking around the planet, and you don't ask him questions on how to advance society. You don't ask him this. You don't ask him that. The only thing you want to care about is improving your ability to kill. That lets you know how fucked up people is on the planet. How fucked up these archons really are. That's the best they can come up with. All these messiahs that didn't hit the planet over the past since, 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 uh, we gonna say as early as Marie Laveau and Harry Tubman, although we know it was bad motherfuckers even back then too, just, not just them. But these motherfuckers hit the planet and the best thing you could come up with is let's kill them off. See what I'm saying? Let's kill them off. So you know, I keep telling people we are in the mind of a lunatic. This is the demi urges. This is y'all the boys. The blind mad guy's mind. Okay? That's why the world is so fucked up. You are in his mind. Alright? This is a realm within his mind. Because he created the material universe. So, of course, the realm within the material universe that he created, i.e. his mind, is 
going to be fucked up according to the mind. Like, your universe inside of your mind is going to be and operate according to your mind state. Right? That's why they tell you you need to have an enlightened, balanced mind. Well, we know this motherfucker ain't balanced. Hell, you far from. The nigga is unstable as fuck. The nigga is a lunatic. He a madman. He a mad guy. You see what I'm saying? A blind guy to dick. A blind, and then worse than a blind mad guy. Like they tell you, the Azatoth in the Necronomicon is a blind mad guy, which is Yaldabaoth, uh, who has learned from his mistakes. You know, and realized how he was fucking up as he killed the feminine energy. As the feminine energy was killed. See what I'm saying? And locked down here. So he he is a he is a blind mad guy. You see what I'm saying? A jealous guy, as he said. So you are in his mind. The material universe is his mind. You see what I'm saying? That's why he's the god of matter, the god of control, and the god of the three dimensional matrix. The third dimensional matrix. When you're the god of something, that means you mentally preside over the realms and dimensions within the, within your uh, mental space. That basically what that means is is all it, like we said. We we teach this law of mentalism, right? The law of mentalism state, t- uh, states what all is mental, mind is all. So first and foremost, before we get into anything else, you got to understand that you are in the mind, and you are dealing with a mind state of a being who is fucked up. Obviously, he fucked up. You seeing the manifestation of his lunacy down here. Mad houses, asylums, right? psych wars, right? you know, they ain't even getting rid of the, 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 those particular kinds of energies. Prisons, all this shit. There's, it, all this fucked up shit that's in his mind. You see what I'm saying? That's what you are seeing. What, what what we're doing here as green hats, as star seeds, as the order of Mers or the order of the Muyans, you know, the order of the the the, the Green Lanterns. Uh, what we are doing here is we are breaking out or we are transporting Mother Earth and ourselves out of His mind into another dimensional mind space outside. Of the current awareness of the motherfucking demiurge, okay, of y'all the boy. That's what I need y'all to understand here. Now I think this is what motherfuckers is getting hooked, uh, uh, messing up on. We are in the mind of the demiurge, and the archons are his intelligences, his perceptions. Don't you have angels and internal forces inside of you? Well, the archons are the demiurge's internal forces, like they teach you in the Gnostic text. It is the demiurge's internal forces. That's what the archons represent. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you got going on here. So and then he has all other manner of beings, all other manner of creatures that he created as well. That's not even listed in the Gnostic text. They, they, some of it is listed in the Greek mythology, you know, uh, that they created as well. But all of it is the manifestation of of this blind, mad, jealous guy, which we know as Yaldabaoth, Aldabaoth, also known as Cyclops, as well as another name for him uh, in other uh, um, lineages. You see what I'm saying? This is his name. So this is what you got going on. That's why it's called a dimensional shift. To shift means you are transitioning or moving from one state of being to the next. So you are we are moving or transitioning from his mind state of the demiurge, his mind, we are transitioning, we are shifting, we are portaling out of this realm or warping out of this realm, which is the mind of Yalabov, into a new realm, a new mind space, a new dimensional space. That's what we mean by a new earth and a new age. A new age where we're not subjugated to the arconic frequencies and mind state of y'all the boy, this blind, mad, jealous guy who came down the Tower of Babel and fucked everybody up. Him and his arconic hosts. So that's what we have been talking about. That's why Earth for the last 400 to 6,000 years has been a fucking 
asylum, a madhouse around here, a prison. You see what I'm saying? It's not just a prison planet, it's an asylum planet. Because, why is it like that? Because the plane exists in the mind of a mad, jealous blind uh, 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 God, you see what I'm saying, I don't even want to call him a Titan, God, you see what I'm saying, a God, you know, which we know is the Demon Urge or the Yaldabor, right, so, 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 this is what you got going on, we, I've shown this picture before, what does Yaldabor look like, we, we gotta, we gotta understand what, what, where we are, what's going on, why it's happening, who is making it happening, most important, uh, where we are, uh, uh, and when we are, most importantly, like 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 Morpheus said, when are we? You know, when are we? So here you go, here you go. This is the blind mad god, a worm with the head of a motherfucking lion. So yeah, so 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 this is what you got going on. This is what you got going on. Who who is who is he fighting against? He is fighting against our guys. Who I've shown you before is Het Heru and Mungu, which is the pre existing one, which there is no image for Mungu. You see what I'm saying? There is no in image for the pre existing one. So let me get down here real quick. But we know the image of Mu, who is Het Heru. Sophia also. And who would be Sophia in uh, the Gnostic text, which you know. So this is what you got going on. Who was the other boy's mother? You know, they tell that she produced. Uh, energy within her without the, the divine light or the divine intelligence and it, and when she seen it, it was a monstrosity this monstrosity is known as Yalda Bulls and so we have, and they tell you we was on we, we was on a particular plane chilling and then once uh, he created this body he banished us with the help of the Moors to this realm this uh, deep within his unconscious mind, or what would be termed his version of the sunken place. Everybody has that sunken place in their mind because he has a sunken place in his mind. This sunken place is pretty much the hell realms, the 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 the, 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 the asylumic underverse uh, that uh, of, of crazy ass motherfuckers in this realm. They uh yeah a uh, 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 crazy motherfuckers that we have to deal with so 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 yeah y'all want a picture of the archons perfect example of them in the movie Dark City I like that I like what they look like in there that's a perfect example and what were they they were parasites they were parasites we now know that the archons are are fashioned out of their Lord and Savior y'all the boy so they are parasites. You see what I'm saying? Parasites uh, slash worms slash if he a worm, then they maggots, which are which are smaller worms. You see what I'm saying? So that's why when you die, what does what happens? The earth eats your body, the maggots, the the yellow boy from energy. And if you haven't figured out who you are or whatever, you haven't figured out who you are, your soul gets recycled on the dark side of the moon. This is what we got going on here. Damn, I've been scrolling for a minute. But I ain't found what I was looking for yet. <laughs> ah, finally, here we go. Finally. So let me let me brighten it up a little bit. So this is Mu. Hit Heru in ancient Egypt, right? This is Mu. You know. This is Mu here. Now Mungu, the creator. The creator. You know has no real image you know he he doesn't really have an image uh, we call him our men or our moon the hidden one <sighs> but do I have a picture of our moon let me see let me, let me look it up for y'all or our men whichever one you want that's why everybody say our men at the end of a prayer or our moon you see what I'm saying? It's, it's the same energy. It is the hidden one, which is just really your soul. But your soul is the creator, uh, just an individual expression of it. So your soul is likened unto the creator. So yeah, it's an individual expression of the pre-existing one or ones. So 
so yeah, let me see if we can get you a picture here. Yeah. See, and we gonna wrap this on up. I like the other picture. The other picture was dope. And I think I sent Sean this. So y'all can have a clear. This is as close to the creator as you can get what the ancient Egyptians called a moon Ra, the hidden sun. You see what I'm saying? This is as close to the the, the idea of the creator as you can get. You see what I'm saying? Because it can be personified with the hidden sun, which is you. Since you are the creator, it is you, the pre-existing one. By default, by divine law. I am it and it is me. See what I'm saying? So this is what you got going on. This is what you got going on. So so you see hit hit root. Well those are the motherfuckers but in 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 uh, in in our language, in our lineage, a moon ra a moon ra this deity here will be called Moongu. M U N G U Moon Goo. See what I'm saying? Which is another name for the creator, which is the same being the hidden, the hidden entity, the hidden spark inside of you. You know? So yeah. So 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 you got you got you got Hit Hiru, Mu, and Mungu, Amun Ra portraying to you what's really going on. Your hidden soul is telling you what's going on, the feminine energy, the melanin inside of you is telling you what's going on. So there you go, Imani Emungu. So, so, so this, this, this is what's happening here. This is what's happening. So, uh, our gods, you see what I'm saying? Us being the god, the city, we are staging this prison break, this, this asylum break, in the form of a more interdimensional shift from his mind to a whole new state of being, which is a high levels of the Pharaoh, where we will become our own Aeon, what they call Aeon in the Gnostic text. What is an Aeon? It's a dimensional space. Free from the thought process of this demiurgic mind, this hellacious mind. That's why motherfuckers coming back to life. Because the 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 laws that Yadabor set in place for this plane are starting to weaken and, and, and fall apart. They start to be rid of moot. You see what I'm saying? Because we are no longer subjugated to his frequencies anymore. And from areas on down, you're going to see what I'm talking about. You're going to see what I'm talking about. So yes, 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 yes. So you're going to see a lot of this reanimation going on in these streets. It's going to, it's, it's going to be big business. Real big business here. So yeah, best believe it. It's getting ready to happen. So... Uh, we're going to show a little scene here. So let's finish up here. And despite the fact that those Rinnegan belong to Madara, what's even more surprising about that is that Kabuto revived Madara and Nagato at the same time, and both of them had access to their Rinnegan abilities. On top of that, reanimations have infinite chakra and can regenerate from any and all injuries. The only way to fully defeat a reanimated person is to seal them away or force the person who summoned them to release the reanimation jutsu. So with this technique, what you have access to is a potentially... Or the soul chooses to move on to a new realm. Also, this army of the most powerful shinobi in all of history who have been turned into immortal zombies with infinite chakra. They can even be left on autopilot so you don't have to do any work yourself. It goes without saying, but this technique is really hacks OP. Quite possibly the most broken ability in the entire Naruto.
Naruto universe. That said, it does have two crippling flaws. The first is that reanimations can still be affected by Genjutsu. Now, at face value, this isn't too terrible, but with certain super powerful Genjutsu, it's possible to turn a reanimated person against their summoner. For example, Itachi Uchiha used the Eye of Shisui Uchiha to cast a Genjutsu on himself with Koto Amatsu Kami. This Genjutsu forced Itachi to follow a single order, and that order was to protect the Hidden Leaf Village. This Genjutsu completely cut off Kabuto's control over Itachi and eventually led Itachi to fight Kabuto alongside his brother Sasuke. The two Uchiha brothers won the battle and Itachi even ended up forcing Kabuto to release the reanimation jutsu. The technique's second crippling flaw is that if a summoned person knows the hand seals to impure world reincarnation, they can perform those hand seals to cut off their connection with their summoner. This gives them complete control over all of their actions and all of the bonuses of being a reanimated person. You know, being an immortal zombie with infinite chakra and all that. As Maru Uchiha said, <laughs> Jutsu on himself. Tell whoever the summoner is he shouldn't use a forbidden technique so carelessly. But that's where I'm gonna wrap things up. I think I've touched on pretty much every base of the reanimation jutsu, though if I left anything out, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Like always, if you have any. Now, let, let me just show you the reanimation jutsu. Show you a piece of this. Show you about two minutes of this real quick. Brought the motherfuckers back to life. <laughs> Found their caskets and they body and brought them niggas back to life. Oh yes, oh yes. So this you got going on here. This what you got going on here. So yeah, uh, that pretty much wraps this one up. Uh, finale: The Green Hat Murder Star Lords are on the rise. We have home field advantage because the other three hats. Red hat, the, the red hatted Moors, the white hatted Christian Gnostic Knight Templars, and the black hatted Cabal have already had their time and their cycles. So it's our time and our turn. So yeah, there you go. Now on another note, before I wrap this up, uh, situation came up. I think I talked about this a few months ago with my Anunnaki summonings. These motherfucking archons out here giving our false mythologies, you know, specifically aimed at uh, the Sumerian mythologies, you know, the Anunnaki and everybody, because they detest the Anunnaki. Why do they detest them so fucking much? They hate the Anunnaki because, uh, it's three groups that they hate, by the way, if I don't know if I ever touched on this, the, An the Sumerian Anunnaki, the Gnostics, and... Uh, for telling, because the Gnostics pretty much told you like it is, Demers and everything, and us, you know, the Muyans, you see what I'm saying, us, the Washita, the Khalifa, the Moskiji, the Iroquois, you know, us. So, yeah, they, they, they hate us with a passion. Those three groups, they can't stand. Now, they locked ours away. They can't do nothing about Gnosticism. It's too far out there. But what they can do is fuck up, uh, the Sumerian teachings. Because they can't stand the Anunnaki and they know the Anunnaki is going to come back. So they're trying to, they, they are launching different distorted campaigns. So a friend of mine, she sent me this information and I read it. And like, I was like, what the fuck going on? Genetically modified mythologies, god damn it. 
<laughs> genetically modified mythologies. I said genetically because they actually trigger these vis these false visions in your imagination of these beings. Like they put the 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 uh, damn what you call them the the fallen angels. They embedded them or programmed them into the Sumerian mythos, and we all know that in and of itself is impossible because um. Uh, the Sumerian Anunnaki precedes the Greek Ange Angelos by millions of years. See what I'm saying? So, so, so that that was that, that, that was going on long before the Greek Angelos or the Greek Angels was even thought of, right? So, um, so to even had the audacity to put them in a Sumerian timeline is disrespectful in itself. You see what I'm saying? Then they take it a step further and. The angels uh, project themselves as the Anunnaki. Check. That's strike one. Strike two, what the angels do is it's a lot of transgendering going on. They they got they got um Azazel projecting himself as Inanna. You know, projecting himself as Inanna. A man woman, for the most part. Transhumanism. So 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 the transhumanist agenda. Then that's strike two. Strike three. Oh, they 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 vamp off the people by taking everything and their life force as much as possible. They also go around murdering, pillaging, raping, and plundering. So they turn the Anunnaki into fucking vampires, to archons, basically, in this storyline. So yeah. And y'all know the Fallen Angel storyline is a Hebrew storyline. You know, a Hebrew storyline. So it ain't got nothing to do with the Anunnaki. Now the Anunnaki do have a rebel group amongst them called the Anarchy. Uh, we know one of those groups in our universe is very well known as the Saturnians and the Titanians. The Saturnians live uh, on the planet Saturn and the Titanians live on this moon. You see what I'm saying? And they well, work with each other and there's a few other rebel factions within the Anunnaki Empire uh, like them. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's what's happening here. So we know this. We know this. They call the Anarchy in the, the, the Holy Tabs. So now, what I decided to do, because she was of the young, younger generation in her 20s, and so, 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 they don't have the information like we had the information. You know, they got the power, they natural mystics, but they don't have the knowledge like that. Like we do. We have the knowledge. We, we had the knowledge. We had to build up our power because we were occult scholars. We had to build up our powers, but unlike us, they already born with the power. They came here with the power, but uh, they just lack the information for the most part, the knowledge. So what I decided to do was, I was like, all right, I got the information. So uh, one of the first books I'm going to uh, put back in the rotation and start selling is The Holy Tablets, Dr. York's Holy Tablets. We're going to put that back in rotation, 1,700 pages. I got the complete book. Uh, it's an e-book that you can get it from a Dropbox link, and I'm selling it for $50. You see what I'm saying? Pretty reasonable price. Because usually if you want a physical copy of the uh, Holy Tab is running three hundred to a thousand dollars. You want the average person who sells you the ebook usually it runs you one hundred to one hundred eighty dollars. Cause and a lot of motherfuckers break up the ebooks into different parts of different sectors, right? So they break that motherfucker up. And so by I think it's like nineteen chapters in all, if I'm not mistaken. So they breaking up all nineteen chapters. That's a hundred and you paying ten dollars per chapter. That's a hundred and ninety dollars coming you coming out your pocket. So fifty dollars, pretty decent. And I'm also putting in rotation his book of revelations. I have that. Now you can't find a book of revelations. No, I don't see nobody talking about that. Very very important book to let you know what's going on now. You see what I'm saying? During these end times. So his book of Revelation is probably one of the most powerful books that hit the planet. They don't want you getting your hands on it. I got that ebook, forty dollars. You want it? Also, I got People of People of the Sun, fifteen, and I got Middle Night Children, fifteen. I got others, and I'll let y'all know about them later. But we are gonna start with them four, and uh, y'all want it? Y'all want it? Y'all can cash at me. Let me know, and I'm gonna send you a Dropbox link. The Dropbox link will 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 uh, give you access to the download, and y'all just let me know if it don't work. I send you another one. You see what I'm saying? Let me know. But yes, Holy Tablets fifty dollars, the Book of Revelation forty, and the Melanite Children and People of the Sun twenty uh, fifteen and fifteen. 
Later on, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in Shambhala and Agatha. That's the inner earth cities too. But if y'all want it now, I still have it. And it's also and that's twenty. You see what I'm saying? So that's twenty. So because that's a powerful book too. It, that lets you know what's going on in the earth. That particular book. And what what what, what Nuwabu was is it was a profound attempt because the group wrote 1,250 books before they were infiltrated by government agents. And I didn't even know those actual facts and pops of rocks were government agent sanctioned books to shut down the original Nuwabian teachers. I didn't even know that. But the old time Nuwabians put me on game. You see what I'm saying? Let me know what to fuck with and what not to fuck with, right? So, so, um, uh, with though, with that being said, the old teachings, these beings wrote 1,250 books. Why you can't get your hands on them? You see what I'm saying? And I remember a few years ago, a lot of people would come to them and ask them about the Holy Tablets, right? They would not sell them the Holy Tablets. I was like, they wouldn't even get in the ebook to the Holy Tablets. And the reason for this is now that I know they, a lot of them are government agents, you know, in a high group of the Nuwabians. I now know this. The, the older Nuwabians have put this information out letting us know. That's why uh, they, they, their excuse at that time for not putting out the Holy Tablets is it needs to be updated. But they've had they've been sitting on this information for a decade, so damn, when are you going to update it? It's been a decade later. This was 2014, 2015, so it's been over a decade because Dr. Dior got locked up in 2004. So it, it took you over a decade with a research team to update the Holy Tablets. So, yeah, that shit don't add up. See what I'm saying? So... Uh, they not gonna uh, put the. They not gonna create a new holy tablets. Matter of fact, the niggas have vanished. They went on the ground. They don't even release none of the information. One thousand two hundred and fifty books that I know about. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That I know about. Probably wrote more than that. One thousand two hundred and fifty books. Can't get your hands on none of them. So I got quite a few of them myself that I got my hands on because I still I created me a digital library or whatever. So I got quite a few of them. So, uh, yes, but I know the most sought out the books right now is the Holy Tablets, the Book of Revelations. I know those two for a fact. A lot of people have asked me about the Mennonite children because I've referenced that in my lectures. And another popular was People of the Sun and Shambhala and Agatha. So, yeah, I have those five books. You know, holly at me. Like I said, Holy Tablets 50, Book of Revelations 40, People of the Sun, and... Uh, and uh, Midnight Shooting 15, and, and uh, Shambhala and God is 20. So, holler at me if you want those books. I will get you the links. You can download them, have them forever. Pass them down to your kids. I can't stress that enough because they, is not, they are not putting that information back in them. What was New Wabu about? New Wabu, or the energy known as New Wabu, was designed to activate and nourish and develop your Anunnaki genetics to their highest heights. That's what Nuwabu was about. They call it the science of sound right reasoning and sound right knowledge. But at its core, at its core essence, it was designed to fully reactivate your um, your Anunnaki genetics. Genetics. That's what it was all about. The Sumerian energy. That's why when they was fucking with the Sumerian panth pantheon, that was the baddest shit they produced. I mean, they went to ancient Egypt too, but the Sumerian pantheon was the baddest shit they produced during that during the height of their uh, time uh, uh, when they was in power on the planet. So, holler at me. I got them. We putting this back in rotation now because that shit touched me in ways y'all don't even understand. I cannot believe this is what they feed our people now. They feeding them these false ass mythologies, y'all. And, and, and Sumerian, they, they picking on the Sumerian mythology the most. So they feeding our people these false ass, fake ass, distorted ass mythologies. So the other night, the Anunnaki came to me. They was like, you need to put that shit back in rotation, Maul. You need, you need to put them back in rotation. You need to put them back in them so people can get their hands on it, especially the younger generation. Everybody in their 20s and teens right now, holler at me. Uh, we we gonna we gonna get you back in the game because a lot of information has been purged 
over the past four years, four or five years. So that y'all can't get y'all hands on it because y'all are the ones that are scared of. They knew we was the scholars, but who they're really scared of is y'all because y'all are the actual mystics who already have the power. Y'all just need the knowledge, the information. See what I'm saying? Of course, knowledge comes from within you, but, but like I said, philosophy is the practice of rebuilding your neural network. So if you got the knowledge, think how much more powerful you're going to be when you understand that, that those those insights that's coming from within you. When when you have the information to accelerate the the, the, the insights and downloads and uploads that you get. Miss Pam, will you it will be released? Probably not. Yeah, hell no, nah, they ain't gonna release it because they're gonna just do it all over again. So 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 they don't want him on the streets no more. One thousand two hundred and fifty books, like I said, according to the New Orleans. Uh, the old time New Orleans, you know, one twelve hundred and fifty. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they did that within a forty year time span. You think they're not gonna show out in a digital age? Yes, no, they're not bringing them back. They're not bringing them back. So yeah, take what you can get. Go ahead and get your information. Holler at me if you want it. So yeah, there y'all go. And also, I also said a uh, uh, hundred sacred needle names for twenty, and I also throw in the fifty names of Marduk as well. So. Any questions? Any questions? I'm going to take a few questions. I just want to put that on up out there. Any questions? Yes, Michelle, you can get a link to purchase from me. Yeah, yeah, it's a Dropbox link. If y'all don't know what kind of link it is, it's a Dropbox link. So if you got Dropbox, and I think, uh, yeah, if you got Dropbox, you can, you can get it. And I uh, think you can get it without it. They allow you to get it but let me know let me know we'll work some out in mind how are we to respond to them or know the dead being slash once awakened and walking the monster they're not gonna fuck with anybody vibrating high the trees are not gonna fuck with you when they awaken if you vibrate at least on 528 hertz that's your solar plexus think 638 is your heart chakra so I said, go on, get up to this crown, be, be be on the safe side. But yes, if you vibrating high and off the frequency of this Arcana ELF uh, matrix, then you're going to be good. Because a lot of motherfuckers is about to disappear. They're about to just phase out of reality. Drop dead because they cannot handle handle the green light radiation and these plasma energies that's hitting the planet right now. These golden plasma and blue plasma energies. So yeah. So there you go. So you, how you respond to them? Uh, you, uh, it's more uh, along the lines of how they respond to you. You're gonna be good because you vibrating high. We gonna survive this, like my boy said, because we are not operating within the confines of the the the, the, the demiurgic mindset. We vibrate on a whole other dimension. We are actually forerunners, time travelers, who are pushing and shifting this realm to where it's supposed to be in a new dimensional mindset, a new golden age. So this is what you got going on here. So yeah, so 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 you're gonna be good. You're gonna be good. You know, when the trees get up and start fucking niggas up, they on the fucking niggas up. That's vibrating too low, extra uh, extra low frequencies. When the animals get get right, when they start reanimating around here, they want to kill the motherfuckers who vibrate too low. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Extra low frequencies. If you ain't vibrating at least on the frequency of nature, which is 528 hertz, we're going to go, on, you know, which is your solar places, because you know who you are at that point. Then if I said, go and get up to that crown chakra, which is a thousand and some hertz, and be good. You know, go and have all them chakras open. If you want to, uh, uh, if you new to the game, you can try to open up your chakras. There are guided chakra meditations on YouTube that you can meditate to and listen to to accelerate that process. So yes, yes. Even the Kundalini awakening, there's a gap. There are guided Kundalini awakening uh, meditations on YouTube as well. Reiki and all that. Go take full advantage of that, that technology while it's available because eventually they're probably gonna shut this grid down like they did with Texas and everybody. So yeah. So yeah. Any other questions? Before I get up out of here.
So yeah, just believe it's going down. So you ain't got to worry about it. Lee, Lee, do you think there will be any changes when the grid goes back up? There's going to be a lot of changes here. Yeah, them changes happening right now as we speak. Rupert, over the summer, I was able to turn the temperature up or it was greeting me. Well, did I have experience? Yes, yes. The stronger your soul energy get down here, the more it affects the physical world. The natural world, you know, so yeah. So yeah, another thing with your family members just, just popped up in my head. You, you know, I, I released that post, word to the wise, keep your friends close. I mean, keep your enemies close, keep your friends close, and keep your family closest. Uh, they're going to be the most dangerous, your family. When this shit really start going down, so watch out for them. Now, if they living with you, you got them gargoyles, so they mind ain't gonna be as fucked up. So that's why I told y'all get them gargoyles, put them around your house, put them outside your house, and in, in the other area. Because when this shit really pop off, they, they mind's gonna be the first thing they go, and they gonna start, especially when they get that fucking vaccine. You know, uh, yeah, they, they, they mind's gonna be the first thing to go, and they gonna be fucking lunatics. They gonna create artificial zombies, or 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 or. or or or, or our cyber zombies down here, so yeah, be watching out for that. Or techno zombies, you know. So yeah, be on your techno magic. You can use your techno magic to shut down the nanites. You can if they if they going crazy, you can also rule fucking uh, magnets. Get you some magnets over them as well to 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 disarm the nanites inside of them. They gonna feel that shit too. They gonna feel like something dying inside of them too. So yeah, let them know. Theodore, what's new Earth's page? Uh, I think it's, what is this page? Uh, you talking about uh, Orion? Orion. Oh, let me see here. What, what is it? He on Instagram, by the way, if you want to know where he at. Let me see here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I think it's like Orion Daystar or something like that, but let me let me make sure. Don't quote me on that. Here we go. Orion Daystar. Orion underscore Daystar. That's his name on our Instagram. Orion underscore Daystar. So, yeah. What kind of magnets? Ah, uh, shit. Uh, I'm gonna have to show them how to do a video on magnets. Uh, but they usually like little toy magnets. You can get it uh, any little toy store, Dollar General, or whatever. But go ask them about magnets at Dollar General. Them motherfuckers are the most powerful. Them little toy magnets that they have, them bitches powerful as fuck. Get them. But, I think I'm about to get ready to get on up out of here, y'all. David, what's in that shit? What's in the vaccines? All type of crazy shit. But most importantly, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the chemicals that's going to fuck you up. It's the nanites in the chemicals. But I know it's black goo, mercury, and various other shit. Uh, opium. I know opium is in that shit. And various other shit that they're not even listing. You know, they, they, they never pay attention to what they list. Pay attention to what they don't list. Uh, they put that black goo in there, which fucks with your melanin. Uh, they put uh, and, and program nanites in there. Uh, they put opium in there to, to, to mentally retard you like they do any fucking uh, uh, medical drug. And, and, and uh, they put their mercury in there. So, yeah, to poison you. But it's all designed to poison your mind, nanites. So, yeah. 
Rose Love, I'm having headaches and the ear pressure. What can I what can help? Breathing techniques are your best. Doing physical activities like dancing, um, um, walking. You also do like little Tai Chi, Chi Gong techniques as well, yoga. Anything to get that energy out of your head and bring it down to your body so you can work it out. So, so yeah. So, yeah. Baby fetish, there you go, Alexis. All the type of crazy shit, you know, they got in there. All right, y'all. I'm Marvin Jones. Y'all put the word out. Share this with your friends. If you want to hit me up at, uh, you want to check out my other code lectures, uh, you know, check me out at The Mel Night Water on YouTube. And if y'all want to donate, of course, y'all can uh, support uh, MCJ Network, Cash App me, and I'm out. Peace.